Hello, and welcome back to Homebrew. Today we'll be recapping Session 11 of the Call of the Hunger campaign, as well as preparing for Session 12 of the Call of the Hunger campaign. Now, last time we left off, we had our party headed towards the uh, Weeping Willows that they were going to fight in order to extract some much-needed resources uh, for Emery on behalf of someone who uh, needed it in Lamore. The main thing being here that our, uh, our PC... Emery had uh, a contractual obligation to get this done on a particular timeline. Now, what we wanted to do in our last session was introduce uh, an opportunity for some uh, survival checks uh, and some uh, navigation of the forest to make it seem uh, a lot less like uh, any other, you know, like classic farms and roads sort of situation where everything was easy. This is a much more aggressive terrain. It's easy to get lost. So we wanted to depict that environment. We wanted to build tension with the timeline, and we wanted to give the other characters some reasons to be able to come back into the forest and engage with some other side quests. I think we did that pretty well in our last episode. Maybe too well. Uh, we had prepared two optional encounters, one going through the thicket limbs in and interacting with the Sillin tribes. And another one for if the uh, party chose to go through the feeding grounds where they would run into the Flaying tribes. And we could do this before or after the Weeping Willow fight. I chose, uh, based off of um, the flow of things, to put it before the Weeping Willow fight. And uh, essentially what happened is that the party ran into these characters, uh, a band of Flaun. Uh, and essentially, based off of the discourse that they had, uh, I was not prepared for the characters, or sorry, the player characters, to drop as much information as they did. And I did not have prepared what the uh, PC, I forget her name now off the top of my head. Uh, actually, you know, I got on my notes right here because I'm a good DM, maybe sometimes. Uh, we got it. Uh, Feodora, there we go. Uh, so I didn't have what Feodora would do when presented with the information from the players. And so we played it improv. Uh, and what she essentially did is decide that this is uh, above her pay grade and she needed to bring uh, the players back to her boss, Ambrosia. Now, at this point, I thought this was pretty cool because we had some opportunity for a sharing and swapping of information from the players and the NPCs. Uh, I was uncomfortable as a DM because I had to completely make up what Ambrosia looked like and her demeanor on the fly. And then I jotted it down in my notes right after the, uh, right after the um, session just to make sure that I didn't uh, forget how I described her for the future. Um, so what essentially were some of the pros and cons of uh, us kind of getting derailed from the Weeping Willows and kind of going further into the uh, forest to have this encounter with the flame. Well, first of all, is now the time is uh, going to be pretty intense uh, with uh, Emery's uh, lineup. And that's one of the things that I double checked between the last session and this session was, uh, does Emery have enough time to actually complete her quest? And so uh, I checked and s figured out whether or not if she left right now, what would that look like? Additionally, I had to prepare for the fact that she might not make it. And I started to wonder whether or not it would be a better story, whether or not she made it or not. Players also discussed that Wretch might actually be able to cure or rid Emery of her curses. So I started to think about what would that look like? And are those avenues that I'm comfortable with as a DM? And essentially, I needed to make sure that if the players chose a route, that ultimately Sarah, the one playing Emery, wouldn't feel bad about how things worked out. And I needed to make sure that uh, Austin and Dustin wouldn't feel like they, that their characters couldn't stick with Emery if something weird happened, right? So they've discussed that they are not comfortable with necromancy. I need to make sure that they wouldn't feel like they needed to split the party if something weird necromantically happened. Uh, that would drive them into separation because they still don't know each other very well. So those are the kinds of things that I needed to think about before this next session. Uh, additionally, some things that came out of the last session was uh, we had to think about what the Flayoon 
could benefit by having a relationship with the party because that hadn't really been an opportunity for them yet. And that would actually, I think, came out organically with them thinking, hey, you know, we don't have a lot of information about how Kimo got these things that he's here with. Uh, I had to think a little bit more about uh, the stones that he has and how they fit into the lore of the world. Uh, and so I, I started working on that a little bit and I updated my notes with that too. Now, what are we going to be doing next session? Well, I had to make sure that the party could actually uh, get out of here, right? Uh, I think with Ambrosia saying, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity to side with us, but if you don't, I'm going to abide by the laws of hospitality and escort you out of here. That gives us a pretty safe assumption that the party is going to leave and go after the Willows and get the heck back to Lamore. And so that's what I started to prepare for. Now we have the Willow fight and all of that already set up, so we don't have any preparation that we need to do for that, which means that really uh, that gave me an opportunity to start preparing Lamore for the party to come back. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about what would those different factions look like? And in fact, I ended up creating a bunch of side quests, thinking about how those characters would interact. So I got stage four, uh, the Loom, the Lamore situation. And I thought about, well, you know, Retch was a basically a, felon a wanted man here so what would that look like with them coming back they've got that while in buckham side quest uh sarah knew some people who came to the city with some contagion what would that look like what does that have to do with the infection of cinder that is the main campaign because cinder's got this parasite that came from the same source as the leeward star from our origin story uh, taking root. So I looked into that a little bit. I jotted down some paragraphs. Uh, the party was supposed to go to Paratisium uh, to basically tell them that the Atari is starting a gang war with the bronze for them. Well, they didn't do that. So how will the Atari feel about that? Uh, and so we started to look into creating some uh, story and uh, some actionable items. Uh, so that way we didn't, we didn't back ourselves into a corner doing improv the whole time for that. So, but that's that's all for another uh, uh, for another prep session that we can discuss a little bit more in detail what all I started to get going since I had a little bit of breathing room as a DM uh, with us taking this side, uh, side tangent here. Uh, so other than basically uh, getting prepara preparation going for future sessions way down the line and cleaning up after the last one, we didn't have too much to go uh, from uh, that we needed to get cleared up in the meantime. The only other thing that I would have to say is that uh, on our recap of the last session is I kind of liked what we did with Oliver, giving him a little bit more of a time to shine in the light as a real human being with thoughts and feelings and emotions about what's going on. I think it was important for uh, Ilya and for Wretch to see that because soon we might be coming into a situation where uh, something happens with Oliver and with Emery if they don't make it on time back to Diala. And lastly, we had to figure out what would happen with Diala if she was spurned by Wretch curing the curses, or what would happen with Oliver if uh, the time comes due that Emery doesn't make it back to Diala in time with the sap of the Weeping Willows or the tears of the Weeping Willows. So that was everything that I considered. I summarized a little bit uh, i'm not going to necessarily do any spoilers for you guys but essentially all you really have to look at is are the effects of what you're doing uh coming out of here something that you're comfortable so that way no matter what no matter which way the chips fall um you as a dm are comfortable with it and you think your players will be too uh nothing that uh the players could do at this point whether they're late or on time would really break the game or or break the immersion i think and it would still make for a good story. So that puts us in a good position for session 12. That's all we really need. Uh, and we can save everything else for next time. So thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you again on the homebrew.